But first, maybe, just maybe, things are starting to unravel for Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews, the most dictatorial leader Australia's ever seen since at least, let's go back to the days of Jack Lang, the 20s and 30s era Labor Premier of New South Wales. Up until late last night, Andrews was right to think he had swatted away all the opposition to his pandemic power grab. Victorian Bar Association, the Ombudsman, the Human Rights Commissioner and the 60 QCs too who denounced his draft legislation as, quote, a blank cheque to rule by decree. As predictable as ever, his contempt for the official opposition was on display as well and his disdain for the tens of thousands of Melbournians who've been on the streets protesting. Yes, there's been a handful of ratbags, but that doesn't invalidate the views of mums and dads and families worried about this power-hungry Premier. He'd even ignored the upper house crossbench, save the three compliant leftists he needed to get the numbers, to continue to use his COVID excuse for one-man rule. But now the bill that was so urgent it had to be rammed through this week under special urgency motions in the parliament and very little scrutiny, it's now been put off, perhaps indefinitely. And the more centrist crossbenches he so airily dismissed, well, he's back courting them all again. All because the politically dead have come back to life. Adam Somurek, the self-confessed brand stacker and one-time factional warlord has turned the tables on Andrew. And for the first time in a long time, the Premier has been outplayed by a former party insider who can read Andrews like a book. It's as though the Premier forgot one of the cardinal rules of politics. Be careful of a wounded, cornered adversary, particularly one that knows where the bodies are buried. That Somurek is politically savvy, that's a given. After all, Andrews made him a minister the moment Labor won government. Right now, he's more believable than the spin-driven Premier. After all, Somurex confessed to his political sins. He's been banished from the Labor Party and no longer has any motive to tell lies to protect the guilty. Indeed, I'm surprised Andrews has underestimated him, but clearly he has. In the Herald Sun today, Somurex didn't miss in his description of the Andrews government. He pointed out that the checks and balances of the Westminster system were not designed to combat a strong leader that dominated the parliament and that the advent of disciplined political parties meant that our parliamentary system could easily become, quote, an elective dictatorship. Somirek also made the telling point that of the three Labor governments he'd experienced, led by Steve Brax, John Brumby and now Daniel Andrews, quote, never has the caucus been sidelined as much as this term. And that this has left, quote again, Andrews as the sole decision maker. The one point in his denunciation of the Andrews government and his condemnation of his latest power grab that doesn't ring quite true is the claim that had he continued to be a member of the Andrews cabinet, he says he would have argued against this bill. Now, I can't see it. I can't see that anyone stands up to Andrews inside the Labor machine unless he's tried to destroy them. And then they've got nothing to lose and they speak up. Even at a party level, Andrews is supreme. The whole point of putting the party into administration was to strengthen his power. Publicly, it was all spun as a way to clean up the internal corruption and integrity issues. In reality, it just cemented Daniel Andrews' power and it shut down dissent. Unlike his vendetta against former Emergency Services Minister Jane Garrett, like the Red Shirts affair, like the decision to use private security guards, he is supreme and no one questions Daniel Andrews. That's the heart of the problem. No one in the Labor Party has had the principles and the courage to stand up to the Premier, even though many of them must have worried about his creeping Stalinism and his economy with the truth. It's only now that Somurek has nothing to gain from hiding the truth that he's finally, he says, telling it how it is. I suppose we should be grateful that this expelled former minister is prepared to take on the Premier against these laws when most Victorians feared 
the fight was over. But what does it say about the supposedly honourable Labor people inside the Andrews government that they've preferred the comforts of office to standing against and calling out the trashing of our democracy? All those Labor MPs who contacted me last year during the Cote inquiry and expressed their shame at how the Premier and his office had treated our most vulnerable in Victoria. Where are they? As John Howard used to say, in politics, every day is a test of character. But far too many people, isn't it, inside the Andrews government appear to have completely flunked.